Nick. A couple of sources saying that you were the one leading the Institute attack on the Pridwin. So, you want to tell me why you did it? Why you sided with those boogeymen? You know what the Brotherhood would have done to the Commonwealth, Nick. I did the right thing here. Look, no one had more reason to dislike the Brotherhood than me. But this? Wiping them out? And the railroad? All those lives lost. For what? So a group of mad scientists can keep plundering the Commonwealth to their heart's content? Is that truly the world you want to live in? I'm sorry if you're upset. But this is the world we've got now, Nick. Thanks to you. You know, since the first time we met, I'd always got the sense that you were going to change this place. I just never expected it'd be like this. Hey, there's something you need? Hey, let me ask you something. Sure, ask away. It's just, uh, with everything that's happened with you and your, your family, it's a whole hell of a lot to process. I wanted to make sure you're holding up all right. Yeah, I'm all right. Huh, you're a tougher nut than I thought. Tougher than I was. Took me a long damn time to get a feel for this place. Thank goodness I found Diamond City. It's got its flaws, sure, but it beats the hell out of anywhere else in the Commonwealth. Of course, when I took up there back when, people were just as scared of the Institute as they are now. Maybe more. The massacre of the CPG was still pretty fresh in people's minds at that point. And folks were still losing sleep over the broken mask. Plenty of people assumed I was just a saboteur, moving in to melt down the reactor or poison the drinking water. But at the time, they couldn't exactly turn me away. Why'd they let you in? Because I'd rescued the mayor's daughter. Gal of about fifteen. Pride and joy of the mayor back then. Man by the name of Henry Roberts. The young Miss Roberts decided she'd run off with some caravan hand. She'd, uh, <clears throat> known for an evening. Turns out the guy was part of a gang of kidnappers. I didn't even know who I was rescuing, just stumbled on a crying girl and four toughs. I took her home and the mayor dubbed me a hero, offered me a place in town. Lots of folks protested and said I was a spy, but he wouldn't have it. Taking up in the city was tricky at first, but I never tried to hide what I was, and people seemed to warm to that. Was it hard settling in? Well, they sure didn't make it easy. I started off doing the jobs no one else wanted. I got more banged up being Diamond City's handyman than I ever did living out in the ruins. But I guess folks never forgot I rescued the mayor's daughter, so they started coming to me when people went missing. Wife runs off with a new paramour and takes the rent money with her? Talk to the synth. An upset father decides moving him and the kids to good neighbor in the dead of night's not the worst damn idea since the bomb? Go get Nick. After a while, the jobs got so backed up, they didn't even ask me to do the handyman stuff anymore. Hell, I was so happy to do it, it was months before I started charging anyone. I never stopped being Nick the synth, but it was Nick the detective folks came to see. It was about then that things, uh... Well, things finally started feeling normal. It took me a long time to realize that home is where you make it. And with some time and effort, this place can be home for you, too. That's a long story, but I hope it helps. Want to get moving? Heads up. I'm listening. I think we ought to talk. Is something the matter? You sound upset. What? Oh, no, no. We've just been traveling a while now, and I figure there hasn't exactly been equitable distribution of information. I've gotten a decent glimpse into your dirty laundry, but you still don't really know a whole heck of a lot about me. I uh, figured I'd offer to balance the board. So, is there anything you want to know? What do you remember about the Institute? It's all pretty hazy from back then, but now and then I get glimpses. Life inside the Institute... They keep you isolated. 
A single test chamber was my whole world for years, and someone was always watching. Then one day you wake up on the other side, and that's it. They've cut you loose. Welcome to the brave new world with such people in it. So, so who are you, Nick? That's a question I've been trying to figure out myself for a long damn time. I know I'm a synth, authentic institute handiwork, but I'm still mechanical, not bioengineered like the fancy synths giving everyone the willies these days. I get tune-ups now instead of checkups. But my memories, my personality, they're all lifted from some cop who volunteered for an experiment back before the war. They scanned his brain and copied it onto the hardware that runs between my ears. Don't know why they chose to make a robot based on some pre-war cop instead of a math genius or a bioengineer. Hey, maybe that's why the Institute tossed me in the garbage instead of turning me into one of their people snatchers. That's terrible. They really just threw you away? Sure did. It was quite the rude awakening. I remember waking up one day in a garbage heap, a body in tatters and a head full of memories belonging to a man who'd been dead for 200 years. Suffice to say, it was a confusing couple of weeks. Folks didn't really know much about synths back then, so when I finally ran into people, they mostly treated me with caution rather than hostility. But the kids, <laughs> they weren't afraid. I think his name was Jim. The first person to actually speak to me after I got the boot from the Institute. My first human contact in this world. Grilled me for an hour. <laughs> Once they'd seen I wasn't going to hurt anyone, the other folks in the neighborhood came out to ogle the mechanical man. It eventually turned into a pretty swell soiree. A local mechanic even gave me a once-over, free of charge. Those people, they, they treated me like a human being. I've been trying to return the favor ever since. It's a surprisingly rare trait out here sometimes. It's something I've noticed you got a fondness for. Part of the reason I've stuck around this long. If you're good to people, they'll be good back. That's something I've always believed. Couldn't agree more. Well, I expect you're about as bored as can be listening to me rattle my skeletons. We should probably head out. Look alive. There's something you need? Nick. Uh, any chance you got a second now? Of course, Nick. What's up? I wouldn't normally bother you with this sort of thing, but, uh, well, I know I can trust you at this point. For as long as I can remember, I've been getting these, uh, flashes. Memories of places I've never been. Things I've never seen. Memories of Nick's. They're not bad. They're just, um... They're just this inescapable reminder that I'm not the person I think I am, that I'm not a person at all. I'm just a machine, pretending to be human. You think, you feel. You're more than pretending, Nick. Yeah, nice of you to say, but your kind don't usually have to deal with someone else's whole life trapped inside their skulls. Don't get me wrong, I know I'm in Nick's debt. These memories, they've, they've kept me alive. Nick was a hell of a cop. A guy with good instincts and a good heart. I always counted myself lucky they didn't load me up with some ex-con or whatever type might volunteer to let folks tinker with their gray matter. But it's thanks to Nick that I pass for human. Why I get to live cushy in Diamond City and every other synth is shot on sight. I know I got it good, but... My entire life, I owe to Nick. Everything that makes me who I am. My judgment, my speech, hell, even my name. They're his. And I can't do a damn thing about it, because without them, without them, I'm nothing. A shell. All I want is a life where I have something I can call my own. You've already built a life for yourself, Nick. You've got the agency, a home friends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. You know, I, I'm just going to need some time to think on this. I appreciate you hearing me out. You're, you're a real good friend. Thanks.
Go on. Hey, Valentine. Any chance you've rethought helping me close out some Nick Valentine history? Sure thing. What's the case? Well, this one's straight out of the archives. Once upon a time in the land of Boston, there lived a king of organized crime, Eddie Winter. He was a bad man who did a lot of bad things, hurt a lot of innocent people. But he knew the end was coming, so he sealed himself inside a personal shelter located underneath the sub shop he used as a headquarters. Eddie Winter was from my time. Pfft, a real scumbag. The story gets even more twisted. The arrogant bastard wanted to cheat death, live forever, so he could come out of that shelter someday into this brave new world. Sound familiar? Only Eddie didn't want to be a frozen banana. No cryo sleep for him, no. He invested his money in some sick, crazy radiation experiment. Jeez. You've really done your homework on this guy. I have. And I uncovered a doozy. Eddie Winter went and turned himself into a ghoul. 200 years before it was fashionable. Hell, he was probably the first one. And I'm convinced that he's still locked inside that shelter. Safe and sound. Ready to come out and begin his evil reign all over again. I'm gonna find him and kill him. So that never happens. You in? All right, Nick. Let's get the bad guy. You're a good man. Now, I know where Winter's vault is, but the door is sealed with a complex numerical code. Lucky for us, Winter's arrogance knew no bounds. Back in the day, he recorded ten holotapes, incriminating different criminal associates. On each one, he hit a single number. We find all of those holotapes, we get all the numbers. We get all the numbers, we get the code. And then we get Winter. I've been putting together a file on this one for a while now. There's a pair of holotapes in here worth listening to, uh, including one of Winter's that I managed to snatch from the Cambridge Police Evidence Lockup before getting swarmed by ferals. I just need to find the other nine and bring them to me. You know, I think I found all the others. Take them. No fooling. Wow. That's some real solid detective work. Uh, they're older than dirt, but they've got Eddie's paw prints all over them. These are the real deal. And they've still got the code pieces in them. Let me run them through the old processor. Got it. One, nine, five, three, seven, two, eight, four, zero, six. That old thug's holed up in Andrew's station. Now, let's go bring down Eddie Winter. I don't think we're alone. Not exactly Nothing. subtle, pal. The hell?
1953728406. The fuck? Who the fuck are you? I'm the last human you're ever gonna lay eyes on. Huh. Oh boy, oh. If I had a sawbuck for every time somebody said that to me. But I ain't dead yet, am I? Just how the fuck did you get. No. No way. Not after all this time. Don't tell me you actually cracked my code. In the hollow tapes? <laughs> well, hey. It's only been what? 200 years? <laughs> well, look. I'm not sure what you thought you'd find. Gold, jewels, the secrets of the universe. But you get me. One guy. A ghoul, I guess you'd call me. Just living, surviving, and what I got, you can't have. That code? <laughs> it was a joke. I just wanted to prove how dumb those feds were. Turns out, pretty dumb. So take your asses someplace else. I'm not going anywhere until I get what I came for. Yeah? And what's that? And who are you, huh? You look kind of familiar. But what are you, some kind of robot? Is that what it's like out there now? A world of robot overlords? I knew it. The name's Valentine. Nick Valentine. Remember me? Valentine? The cop? Is that who you're supposed to be? Sorry, pal, but you ain't Nick Valentine. You're just some kind of, uh, machine. You killed my fiance, Jennifer Lands. There's some crimes even you can't get away with, Winter. Your fiance? You mean Valentine's fiance. Pretty girl. A shame what happened to her. But hey, you? Or, you know, the real Valentine? He should have backed off when he had the chance. But what gives, Robot Man? Why do you even care? Some girl gets whacked 200 years ago, and you come into my home acting like a hot guy? Christ, look at you. You're not even alive. Then I guess I'm in good company. You're in for it now. <laughs> Good shit! Ah! Not... yet. Nick. We're done here. There's one more thing I've got to do. I, I wouldn't mind the company if you wanted to tag along. Hmm? Someone's coming. There! Good to know I've got someone I can rely on watching my back. This is it. In this spot, 200 years ago, one of Eddie's boys put a bullet in Jenny Land's back. Now Eddie's as dead as Jenny. And Nick. And I... I'm at a loss. I just need some time to process all this. You mind if we get out of here? Yeah, that is if you're, if you're still interested in traveling together. I wouldn't blame you if you wanted some time on your own after all this. Of course. 
Let's do it. I'm glad to hear it. Come on, let's get out of here. And hey, thanks. <laughs>